Introduction to Pharmacokinetics. This is the first video in a series of lectures on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. In this video, basic pharmacokinetic concepts are introduced to give you an essential understanding before other more in-depth topics are presented. Have you ever read a drug label? Here is an example of Sudafed, which is a nasal decongestant. Where does all the information in the drug label come from? Drug facts, usage, warnings, directions, everything that is important to know about a medication is printed in a drug label. All this information comes from pharmacokinetics or clinical pharmacology studies. So, for example, it tells you how and why the drug is used. It might also give you warnings on drugs you don't want to take while you're taking Sudafed or potential problems with the medication if you have specific diseases or conditions. In this example, the Sudafed drug label warns you that if you suffer from heart disease or high blood pressure, you want to consult with your doctor before you take Sudafed. Medication directions describe how to take the drug, how often, how many pills or tablets, or how much of the liquid needs to be taken. In some cases, the dosage is different depending on age or health condition. Prior to making medications available to the general public, information in the drug label needs to be gathered, analyzed, and understood in order to tell you how to use these medications safely and efficiently. What do you want to do when you're not feeling well? You want to feel better as soon as possible. Usually, you take some pharmaceutical agent and hope that you will feel better. These are called drug uses or drug effects, and this is what in turn is called pharmacology. If you eat a sandwich, it goes into your body, and then the body does something called metabolizing the food, and it turns it into energy. Process from food to energy is called catabolism. Like food, the drug goes into your body as well, but it does something slightly different. It gets broken down into little pieces that your body gets rid of. These pieces are called metabolites. Therefore, pharmacokinetics is the study of the processes, how your body treats the drug that comes in, how it is converted into metabolites, and how it makes it out of the body. In summary, pharmacokinetics is the science how the body converts the active drug into metabolites. Pharmacokinetics can also be thought as the science that studies the time course of the drug in the body, or even as the study of what the body does to the drug. Science and math have always been linked together. There are many examples of science and math. Einstein's nature of energy, where E equals mc squared, explains how mass can be changed into energy and vice versa. There's an equation that describes a line, y equals mx plus b. Newton's second law of motion, the Pythagorean theorem, which states that a square of the side opposite to the right angle, c, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, a and b. And Beer's law, relating the absorption of light to the properties of the material through which the light is traveling. All these are mathematical constructs that explains what you see in the real world. So science and math have always been linked together. Pharmacokinetics is no different. There is a math that is linked to the science on how the body handles the drug. In pharmacokinetics, we have an equation that explains the concentration of drug in the body at each time point. This equation is a function of a set of parameters. Concentration at any time t is equal to a function of a set of pharmacokinetic parameters. C of t is the drug concentration at any time t, and f of p is a function of pharmacokinetic parameters. And these pharmacokinetic parameters are based on human physiology. These key physiological pharmacokinetic parameters are those, which is D, volume of distribution represented by the letter V, the absorption rate constant, how quickly the drug is absorbed in the body, that is Ka, or sometimes also represented by K01, bioavailability, the fraction of dose that you take that actually makes it into your bloodstream and is therefore available to produce an effect and clearance, how quickly the body removes the drug from the bloodstream. What do changes in dose do? Here we depict three different dose levels. Let's say that the red line is a normal dose. If the dose is double, one can see that the concentrations increase, the blue line. If you decrease the dose by half, you can see that the concentration decreases, the green line. Therefore, dose effects how much drug is in the body at any given point in time. How do concentrations change with changes in bioavailability? 
Let's assume that the blue line in the middle represents that 50% of the drug is bioavailable, meaning that 50% of the total drug taken in a capsule actually enters your bloodstream. If somehow that process was interfered with and only 15% of the drug reached the bloodstream, as shown by the green line, you would have much lower concentrations. The red line shows what happens if something would increase the amount of drug that got into the body relative to the normal situation of 50% for this compound. Bioavailability is a measure of how much drug reaches the bloodstream. Consequently, as bioavailability increases, drug concentrations increase. The volume of distribution is a slightly different concept that would be explained in later lectures. For now, you can see what happens when the volume of distribution is changed. Assume the red line is a standard volume of distribution. If this volume of distribution is increased, then the concentration is decreased. This concept is better explained if you imagine a cup with pebbles inside. The concentration is pebbles per milliliter or ounce of liquid. If you take the cup and pour the pebbles into a much larger container, you will have fewer pebbles per milliliter of water, because there is more water, and thus the volume has increased. Conversely, if you decrease the volume but keep the same number of pebbles, let's say that by pouring the pebbles into a shot glass, then the number of pebbles per millimeter of water would be much higher. As you can see in the green line, decreasing the volume of distribution increases the concentration. You might wonder if people actually change volume size. People don't actually change the volume size very much during the course of the day or even a few months. The volume of distribution is a theoretical volume rather than an actual physical volume of the body. Volume is a proportionality factor to relate the observed concentration to the amount of drug in the body. Clearance is the set of processes that the body uses to eliminate the drug from the body. As clearance increases going from the red to the blue line, we can see that concentrations are lowered more quickly and the drug is gone faster. As we decrease clearance, or we decrease the rate of elimination, we go from the blue line to the green line, which is higher. The drug reaches higher levels and also stays for a longer period of time. The absorption rate constant is how quickly drug gets absorbed into the body. As the absorption rate slows, the green line depresses a little and moves to the right, relative to a normal absorption rate depicted by the red curve. As the absorption rate increases, the rate of appearance accelerates. Thus, maximum concentration is higher and earlier relative to dosing. One can see how the concentration curve shown by the blue line moves slightly to the left, and the peak concentration is a little closer to the origin, and it's also significantly higher. Essentially, in pharmacokinetics, there is a mathematical construct that explains the concentration of drug at every point in time. This is the pharmacokinetic equation that is analogous to Einstein's nature of energy, E equals mc squared. In this example, we have a mathematical construct for a one-compartment extravascular absorption model. But for now, we're not concerned with these equations. We simply want you to understand that the drug concentration over time can be explained with a mathematical equation. This concludes the first part of this introductory video to pharmacokinetics.